So here are our eight steps to the first MIDI recording. Step number one, let's choose the sound module that we want to record onto. Now I want to use one of my VST instruments that I've got. So I'll go into Panels, VST Instruments. Let's choose one. There's a drop-down menu here. I'm going to choose the Universal Sound Module. There it is. If you click on Edit, you can see the actual instrument. You can't do many things in this one here. You can change the volume, the master volume of the instrument. You can change the pitch bent range. And you can change the speed of the low frequency oscillator. But for now, we're going to leave everything as it is. And just carry on with our recording, OK? Let's close this one for now. So that was step number one. Step number, number two is we have to choose a track on which to record onto. So we need a MIDI track. So we go down here. This is our first MIDI track, sorry. This is our first MIDI track here. You can recognize MIDI tracks by the quaver notes in the, in the class column. Audio tracks have a little wave symbol here. OK, let's go back to the MIDI track. Step number three is to route the MIDI track to the VST instrument. So I go into the out section of the track. Listen, if you can't see the out section, it might be because this bit is hidden. So open it up a little bit. Click on here. Choose the VST instrument, the Universal Sound Module. And if you want, you can double click on the track name and type in a different name, let's say Piano Idea. OK, step number four is to see whether you can actually hear anything. Yep, we can hear something. You can see here that Cubase receives MIDI information on the with the inlight. So information is going from my keyboard into Cubase. And the green light means that Cubase is sending the same information back out again, in this case, to the Universal Sound Module. Step number five, I need to select where I want my locators to be. So up here you can see locators. There's the left locator and the right locator. You can move the left locator by left clicking with the mouse anywhere on this line left click, left click, and you can also do the same thing for the right locator, but this time you have to press the right mouse button. Okay. Recordings in Cubase always start from the left locator onwards, and um, in order for recordings to work, the right locator has to be behind the left locator. Okay, so it has to be a left-right situation. So let's say I'll start my recording from bar one, and let's say I'll put my right locator in bar 9. The recording would stop in Cubase if the cursor reaches bar number 9 because down here is a button which is called punch out and this button is switched on at the moment. So if you just want to record for hours and hours you need to make sure that this button is switched off. Okay, so this button is switched off. Now we can record past the right locator. You can do tests with the button switched on and record something and with the button switched off and record something and see what happens. Step number six, let's see whether we've got the metronome going as well. So we'll press start, switch the metronome on, click, and we can't hear anything at the moment. That's fine. The metronome is up here in options, metronome, You've got two metronomes. You've got the audio click, which is that one. And the MIDI click is just the same thing, but it sends a MIDI node to wherever you want to send it to. OK, you've got these options, or I've got those options. You might have different ones. For now, I'm going to go with the audio click. Press OK. Step number seven is I need to find the tempo for the song. So I want my song to be a little bit slower. So I'll double click on the tempo setting here and type in, let's say, 92. Enter. 
Yep, that tempo might work for the song I've got in mind, that's okay. There are a few other ways of how to adjust the tempo setting. You could, for example, left click or keep your left mouse button pressed over the tempo button here. And as you can see, the values go down, down to, or you can right click, go on. You can keep the right mouse button pressed and the tempo goes back up again. Okay, there are two other ways. You could press the minus key on the number pad for the tempo to go down and the plus key on the number pad for the tempo to go back up again. Okay, a bit higher maybe. And you could also press shift and T at the same time to bring up the tempo and then you can just type in 92 again and there we are. Okay, let's stop this one. Now we're almost ready to record. All we need to do now is to actually press record and then play something. Well, we press record, wait for two bars, count in, and then we'll just play something. Two, three, four, one, two, three, and. first recording and then we just press stop afterwards. Now that we've got the recording done, there are a few more things we can do with the actual take. Number one, we can listen to it of course. Let's listen to it again. And so on. We can change the tempo as it's playing, while it's playing. plus. Okay, press stop again. We can change the actual sound. To do so, we need to open up the inspector down here. See the little triangle there? Click on that one. And here are different programs which we need for the different sounds. Or you can go down the patch names. So I open up patch name and let's go for an organ sound. Let's go for the rock organ. My favorite. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Now that one's playing away, well. that's quite nice. Right, we could cut off the um, remaining bit over here with the scissors. We'll go into the details a little bit later on about the toolbox. Let's record a new part down here, for example. Let's give it a new name. Let's call it Bass. We use the same sound module, Universal Sound Module again. It's the same VST instrument, but this time it's playing on channel 2. We'll talk about the channels and everything later on. Let's choose a bassy sound. Let's go down for Bass. Let's go for a fingered electric bass. Let's create a bit of a so this is me playing on the keyboard right now, just to check the sound. That's not quite bassy enough. On my keyboard I've got a button where I can change the octaves, so I'm going to go down an octave. Okay, it's a bit lower now, and I'm going to go up an octave again. That's the original. That's an octave higher, and even higher. I'm doing all these things on my MIDI keyboard, okay? So you won't be able to see any movements on the screen. I'll do this on the keyboard. So I'll change the octave deck again, go down an octave. And this sounds more like a bass now, doesn't it? So I'll start the recording again as before. I'll press record, but this time I'm not going to press the record button on the transport bar. I'll press the asterisk button on the number pad or the multiply button. Okay, here we go. Okay, and let's press stop again. 
I pressed stop on the keyboard, I pressed the zero key on the number pad, or you can press the space bar on the keyboard as well. Let's listen to it. And if you want, you can switch the match as you go along. It's not too bad. That's okay. And let's record some drums as well. So I'll choose another MIDI track here. Let's call it a drum track. Drums. Drums have to be on channel 10 with the universal sound module. So I'll go for channel 10. Channel 10 is a general MIDI standard for all the drum tracks. So whenever you use a sound module which works as a general MIDI sound module, all the drum sounds will always be on channel 10. And then obviously let's choose the universal sound module again. Here it is, let's create some noise. And you can hear I've got lots of deep noises. That's because my keyboard is still in the octave lower setting. So I'll change that again on my keyboard. Octave plus one. And this sounds like the drums. And let's see whether I can play along to what I've recorded in the first place. Oops, I've switched the metronome off. Metronome on again. Okay, and let's listen back to it again. the drums there. I'm going to show you something else that you can do. Instead of playing the drums at 159, I'll take the tempo down to something a lot slower, let's say 80, half, half the tempo, and I'll delete the drum track. See the drum track here is selected, the drum part is selected. I'll just press delete on the keyboard. This is my hi-hat supposed to be. And then let's see, I'll press the asterisk key again on the number pad for the recording, and then off we go. One, two, three, Let's see what it sounds like without the metronome. That still sounds pretty bad. Never mind. So let's delete the drums again. Choose a different tempo to play along to. Let's go for 120, and then switch to Mention on again, the click, and let's give it another go. sound is not brilliant and that one that's another story altogether